Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard and tonight I'm going to be photographing a beautiful spiral galaxy in the northern constellation Canes Venetici called the Sunflower Galaxy. Spilled some seeds filling up the bird feeder, so Rudy's helped me out. The cleanup crew, man, he loves those. Officially cataloged as Messier 63, this is a northern sky galaxy that's a very decent, respectable size. It lies 25 million light years away, and it's one that I've shot before, but never at this focal length, and I really didn't do it justice, so I'm really excited to take my best shot yet. Astrophotographers have nicknamed the spring season galaxy season just because there are so many amazing galaxies in the night sky to photograph this time of year. If you're used to shooting larger objects like nebulae, you might find that photographing galaxies uses a completely different approach and that they're actually quite challenging to do justice. You can't use multi-band pass narrowband filters to ignore city light pollution to photograph galaxies the way you can with nebulae. They're, they're broad spectrum targets, so just natural light. I'll be using a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope tonight with a monochrome camera and LRGB filters. It's still gonna take a lot of work in the processing to achieve that natural look. There's a bright moon out tonight, which isn't ideal for photographing broad spectrum targets. It's over 80% illuminated, but I'll take what I can get. We've had some wacky weather here in Ontario. Snow on Wednesday, and then now it's warmed right up again. So you never know what you're gonna get. Speaking of taking what you can get, I'm getting a lot better at, well, I'm trying to anyway, planning my imaging sessions and being smart about my limited time under clear skies. The old me would just see a clear forecast and start setting up and then hope for the best and essentially spend an hour Googling targets, examples, thinking of what to shoot, which was just all wasted time. I guess it wasn't a waste, it was kind of fun. I use good old Stellarium for selecting the object type, size, and location. And then I use Astrospheric for the weather forecast. That seems to be the most reliable. And then I usually hop onto Astrobin to see examples of the target I intend to shoot using my telescope. You can filter it down by telescope type. So I can see someone else's sunflower galaxy with the Edge HD 11 and just at least have an idea of what I'm going for. And then if you want to get crazy, you can filter it down by an award winner too. So you're only seeing the best versions of the target you're about to shoot using your gear. Then you really set the bar quite high and get super excited and potentially let down when you see your image. I've been getting a lot of use out of this Edge HD 11 SCT telescope. It's just been a great option to have during galaxy season when you really need that focal length. So it's currently the telescope I have with the longest magnification focal length. With the reducer I have on there, it's about 2000 millimeters, which is just perfect for a lot of these galaxies, the Messier galaxies. I felt terrible last year. I really talked this scope up and I really didn't get it running on any galaxies last spring. So it feels really good to come through on that promise of showing you what this telescope's all about this year. So the camera, is a ZWO 2600mm Pro monochrome CMOS camera and then I'm shooting with a filter wheel with LRGB filters for these galaxies. Now what I've seen others do and it seems to be working is shooting shorter exposures for the RGB. I'm going to shoot I think 90 seconds exposures for each RGB filter and then go longer on the luminance about three minutes there. I've seen people go even shorter but usually they're using like a Newtonian something a lot faster. I'm at F7, which isn't exactly fast, so I think 90 seconds is about as short as I can go. And the idea there is that I don't need to capture a whole lot of details in those colors. I just need that color, specifically the natural star colors where I won't oversaturate them by shooting too long. And then the luminance data, those longer subs, that's where I'll layer in the detail on that color. So I've seen others do this and it works really well. I think this is the actual proper way to do LRGB imaging and it's not something I've really followed closely until now but I'm going to try it for this one and see how it goes. This auto guiding system I've got on the scope here has been working really well for me. So it's just a small doublet refractor telescope, a William Optics Z72, a really like an older one and it's at about 420 millimeter focal length 
and guiding with that scope riding on top on the rail here has worked out really well the guiding has been spectacular at these long focal lengths so i was thrilled to achieve that great guiding on a system like this it's kind of nice about the way i've got it mounted here is that i can easily slide it up and down the rail which really helps for balance so i found it to be right near the front of the ota is the best spot uh, but it's nice to have that option check out this focus distance on the back of it with the guide camera ridiculous i kind of enjoy the fact that i can use this telescope visually and then use it for astrophotography it's just ready to go it's one eyepiece away between visual and astrophotography. So I've just got the diagonal and the eyepiece on the back here, on the back of the reducer. So I can do my star alignment there and do some visual astronomy if I want to. And uh, trust me, the moon looks incredible through this telescope and planets too, for that matter. But then it's just a matter of taking the diagonal off and uh, threading the camera on the back and it's ready to go for astrophotography. You don't often see that, a rig that's just ready to swap from visual to photographic so easily like that. So kind of a nice perk of the way I've got it set up here. Have you noticed these nice hoodies and shirts I've been wearing lately? Just kind of no name, there's no big logo across the chest or anything. They look very comfortable because they are. Believe it or not, a clothing brand reached out to me to model their clothes on my channel, which is funny because I'm not exactly runway material. Gangly has been used to describe my physique once or twice. But I can honestly say these shirts and hoodies, this one specifically is my favorite, I've been wearing it out, from Cuts Clothing are some of the most comfortable stuff I've ever worn. So kudos to Cuts for seeing a YouTuber that people are watching that just doesn't have any style and could really use some new clothes. Thank you to Cuts for sponsoring this video and there's a link in the description for you to get 15% off really really good stuff this is pretty much all i'll be wearing now so thanks cuts rudy what are you doing buddy he's such a good dog but he has a bad habit of eating things off the ground and i don't know what he's pulling out of the grass sticks something but he's just been poking around eating stuff off the lawn and it's not good rudy no more eating stuff okay you be a good boy I use a laptop to control my imaging sessions. It runs my image capture software, Astro Photography Tool. The laptop is this Acer Enduro N3, which is kind of like an outdoor rugged laptop, perfect for astro photography. Maybe you remember it from last summer. Anyways, it's been great running my ZWO cameras, the filter wheel, PhD2 guiding, and anything else I need out here under the stars capturing galaxies. So it's just been a great reliable system and not much has changed in that regard. There's you know lots more you can do in terms of automation with a rig, but I'm saving that for the observatory. <laughs> What you're looking at now is Astro Photography Tool. This is my camera control software, it does many things. This is a live view loop, five second exposure of the current state of focus with this telescope right now on the star Mirfak. I've got a Batnoff mask in there and I'm gonna adjust the focus now on the back of the telescope and you'll see that star pattern start to appear. And that's the whole point of using a Batnoff mask. It's a, a focusing aid. The idea is to get the central spike running right through the middle and then you can take the mask off and know that you're focused. You can see I'm getting closer to being in focus with this telescope with the Batnoff mask as an aid. You can see that star diffraction pattern appear and just slight adjustments with the fine focuser knob at the back of the optical tube to get in focus. It 
It's just after midnight now and I'm continuing to collect sub exposures on the Sunflower Galaxy. They're looking really good despite that moon. I think I'm going to be able to create a pretty decent image out of that data. And uh, I actually went inside for a little bit and just got off the phone. It was a Skype call with uh, some friends of ours we haven't seen in a while. And they were like, man, you know, it's, it's incredible what you're doing. We've been following your, your journey for Astro Backyard. You and Ashley are working together now. It's, it's so incredible. And, uh, you know, it felt really good to hear that. So he was asking, so, so what does a, a regular day of work look like for you? Like, what do you, what do you actually do? And I said, well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, actually creating content, editing these videos and, you know, talking with other people in the industry, a lot of emails, communication that way. And uh, he's like, well, no, but like, what's the actual work? And I'm like, well, no, that is the work, you know, taking these photos and sharing them is, is the work. That's, that's our job. And he was like, well, man, that doesn't sound like work to me. That's, that sounds pretty great. And uh, it, I caught me off guard. I'm thinking, man, that, that is pretty amazing to be able to be photographing the night sky, sharing it with others and to be able to make a living that way. Uh, and that's because of you guys watching right now. If you're watching this video, that lifestyle that, that does sound pretty incredible is because of you. And uh, don't think for a second that I take that for granted. Um, and I won't let you guys down. So I hope you enjoy the image of the Sunflower Galaxy at the end of the video. And until next time, clear skies. Was that weird? I just really like that track. I don't know if it fit, but some kind of badass. <laughs> <laughs>